Okay, so here we are inside of this workbook in the RFD tab. And the very first step here is to bring your pressure data set. So we need to paste that into this yellow box, two columns, depth and pressure. So what I'll do is I'm gonna bring my data set from a different workbook. I'm just gonna go and directly paste that into this box. So now that data has been brought to this chart. And what you can see on this chart is the data set we just pasted. And we have the three lines, one for the gas gradient, the oil gradient in green, and the water gradient in blue. We also have these two horizontal lines, which are calculated based on the intersections. So the, the gas oil contact intersection of the red with the green, and the oil water contact, which is the intersection of the green line with the blue line. So those are calculated and are represented at these horizontal lines. Now, obviously, you do understand that these are the uh, the very intersections calculated by this pressure line. So therefore, that is not really an oil water contact. This is a free water level. Uh, that's the actual definition of free water level, where the capillary pressure is nil, or those two pressures equal. But just let's keep this for simplicity's sake in the language, okay? So on the chart itself, you will see these labels. The gas oil contact with the value and the pressure value at the intersection point. So both depth and pressure. So the two values on these two axes. And then the same for the free water level or oil water contact, okay? that point, that's that depth, and that pressure, okay? Now we have these blocks here, red for the gas, green for the oil, and blue for the water. And you can actually adjust these lines by moving these sliders, okay? And obviously everything updates in real time. So have a look at that contact. When I click on this, those labels do update in real time because that intersection point shifts, okay? So all there is for you to do now is to actually feed these gradients through your data, okay? Now you can do it on the chart as is, but if it's a little bit too busy, you can simplify this chart and go to this filter and focus on one line at a time. If we go here and remove everything and bring back just the data and the gas, let's leave even the contact outside for now. So we have now a very clean chart to work with, okay? So what we need to do is to bring this line to the left and adjust the gradient to fit through the top section. Now at the top, I have left a little reference table taken from Blake's book on page nine, uh, page five, sorry, to be precise. And these are reference gradient values in both PSI per foot units and PSI per meter units, okay? And these are the values quoted here, PSI per foot, and PSI per meter. So you want to make sure that the gradient is in the vicinity of those reference values. Okay, so let's start with the very reference value quoted by Dick, which is 0 0.08 PSI per foot. So let's look at that number and let's move the slider until we get that reference value and see whether that reference actually does fit through our data. So let's, let's do that. Okay, so that's the reference and I need to bring this to the left. Okay, now the way this works is all of these blocks are actually linked to this block of stuff happening to the right hand side, which I left out of the view of the user interface, obviously to keep this clean. But this is where all the magic happens, okay? These sliders are the same ones that I had to the left. And when you move here, things, you see, things change here. So because these are where the calculations actually take place, okay? Now, that point there is defined by that minimum pressure value and also that minimum depth value. So what I need to do is to bring the pressure to the left, so that I need to make that lower, but also I need to make the depth minimum a little bit higher. So I remove all this top section here because I don't need it in my chart. I just want to focus on the depth range of my actual data. So I don't need all that top section. And I need to start bringing that down to a depth which is closer to my shallowest point. I don't want to have too much wasted line in my chart. So that's about it. And now I'm gonna move this to the left, right? So the pressure is gonna move to the left. And then you can see whether the gradient we selected fits through the data. Maybe I can increase it a little bit more slope to that to fit through the data and maybe that a little bit to the left something like that let's say i'm happy with that i'm not too far from the reference gradient value 
now I want to actually bring that the max high so I don't want to have this much excess so I need to bring that using the slider and need that to be lower so I'm gonna move that up excuse me okay that's it so I'm happy with that and now I'm gonna change to the oil line doing that as sorry there okay now same deal that is a little bit too high I'm gonna bring that down a bit so the depth minimum needs to be higher to bring it down let's say there um, now I need to fit the water somewhere here so let's leave the oil depth there because I don't know exactly where the intersection is gonna happen and the gradient I want to be close to that 0 0.35 and not too far so let's see if whether that works to the right there obviously this hinges on your own discretion as to where do you actually fit to those points maybe a little bit more gradient there let's say I'm happy with that and I'm gonna switch again to the water line and now I have too much excess line here I'm gonna bring that depth max a little bit shallower there and I need to move these well let's focus on the gradient first I want to be close to 0 0.45 there now I need to move this to the left so pressure minimum let's move the pressure to the left okay now I have too much excess so I need to bring this down or the other way so to adjust this to the right okay every time you move that depth you need to readjust that so let's say that actually fits quite well I'm happy now with that now I can bring everything back to the plots including the contacts which I have left out and now those contacts are at those precise intersections and we see what the contact depth is and the pressure at that contact now I can actually bring even for further clarity um, the depth value of that oil line a little bit shallower because I have too much line there and let's say that that is the very final chart that I'm happy with okay that's pretty much it now let me tell you that uh, when I post this uh, the first time on LinkedIn some people uh, suggested via the comments that I should use an excess pressure plot instead or add a mobility filter to the data perhaps add well logs for reference um, add some lithostatic gradients or fracture gradients to the charts some people did point out that this is a free water level and not an all water contact uh, maybe add the ability to add additional wells to the charts and or add several compartments so all of those are good suggestions good feedback but my answer to all of that is that um, while well, some of that could be done in this Excel, this, this isn't really meant to become a fully fledged application to compete in capabilities with specialized software, right? So this is a simple Excel utility to make your life easier. That's it. So every time you have a new pressure data set, you start afresh and need to begin implementing your gradients, adjusting your plots and calculating your context, free water level, right? So every time you do this type of site you need to start afresh and it's a little bit tedious so with this utility the idea is to streamline that process so again it's not a magic all-in-one solution you still need to perform the analysis and make discretionary decisions yourself but the intent is that with this tool that process is simplified and the analysis time is shortened okay so I hope you find this useful and please reach out if you have any suggestions for improvements or any feedback at all. Cheers.